Winstead, Connecticut, Home Sweet Home. Home Sweet Home is based on a Sicilian melody. Be it ever so humble, there is no place like home. This is episode 16 of Make Winston Great Again. If you're running for office, town manager Robert Geiger would like you to see him before you talk to any members of the staff in town hall. See Bob first. Tell him who you're going to talk to. We will be talking tonight about many things that have happened over the last few weeks. This program will be repeated again next week, and that will take us late into September, getting closer to Election Day in November. As you watch this picture of Vice President Pence that someone sent to me as a joke once again, I will discuss a bit about the contents of this program. You that are receiving this by email from my email list, you can move forward if you don't like part of it, and backwards if you want to repeat anything on your computer. You that are watching on television will have to watch it as it's presented on channel 191 on Charter TV on Thursday evening at 7.30 and on Friday evening at 7 p.m. I am thinking about having one program every week, repeated also during the week, in October, rather than one program for two weeks, as I've been doing so far. I'd first like to say that the signs are still up at number one, Woodland Avenue, on the way to Highland Lake, off of Boyd Street. That's pretty good. We got some protection there now. We got a reward sign. We got a camera looking down to see if anybody comes on the property. We got a no trespassing sign. And we got a Trump Winstead sign hanging up in the yard. They were stolen once before. But since we put a new one up with a protection and made it very visible, the sign is still there. And I hope will remain there until the election. Thanks to the Donald Trump enthusiast who's let us put them there. Those of you who watched the last program, Trump points at number 15. You can still see it. It's on YouTube if you want to look at it. If you have access to YouTube, may be worth your while. We dwelled upon the state trying to cut the ECS grants from Winston and Torrington. A letter was written to the state by town manager Robert Geiger. And there was an article about that in the Waterbury Republican written by Kurt Moffat, one of their reporters. And there was another article written by Paul Hughes of the Waterbury Republican about the same problem for Torrington. A huge cut proposed in the ECS grant. Now, maybe none of this will happen, but it presented some interesting observations that I'll talk about on this program, Trump Winston number 16. To give you some perspective once again into our financial problems. The bottom line here is that both Torrington and Winstead in the article in the Waterbury Republican pointed out all the things that were going to go wrong if the ECS grant for Winstead was cut by two and a half million dollars. 
Things would really fall apart in Winston, according to the town manager, and he listed them all in the letter he wrote to the state. Pretty bad stuff. A very great letter. Kind of said how Winston really is. Financially, not how the politicians would like you to think a few weeks before an election about the state of our finances. And, of course, the same thing with Tarrington. They were horrified by perhaps a $25 million cut in their ECS grant. And they said they just couldn't run the town if that happened. Now, that is probably not going to happen. It might be posturing by the governor and the Democrats, and it might not turn out to be that way. We still don't have the final decisions from the state, so we don't know for sure. But anyway, after I programmed the last program, I was interviewed by Kurt Moffitt, a reporter for the Waterbury Republican American, and I'll read a little bit of that to you tonight, what he said. It was a couple-hour interview at one of my houses on the lake, Highland Lake, one evening. I thought the article was pretty fair. If you haven't seen the article in the Waterbury Republican when it was published, I'll read a bit of it to you tonight, and then I'll read some of the comments made by the head of the Democratic Party, a former teacher and school principal, and... I will read to you the comments that were made by a former mayor, mother of five, who ran for election and then resigned for personal reasons once she was elected. I'm going to talk a bit about that tonight because it's irony at its best. When reading the Waterbury Republican newspaper article, September 4th, 2017, I saw that perhaps a selectman meeting was going to be canceled for the next evening because they didn't have anything on the agenda. They wanted to cancel the meeting. Todd Arshalashi did come up with one item for the agenda. He wanted to review his opioid efforts. And according to the paper, the other people wanted to have a meeting because the election is in a few more weeks, a month and a half or so, and they wanted to have the meeting. Now, can you imagine that? All the problems that I'm going to be telling you that Torrington and Winston were going to have if the ECS grant was cut, and they can't even have any items on the agenda for the next Selectman Finance Board meeting? It's kind of ridiculous. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw the article. Well, they did have the meeting. It lasted about a half an hour and was nothing significant. A town manager's report, a couple of public comments, and... Todd Arshalashi's opioid report he made at the meeting. And once you hear what was said by the chairman of the town committees, Republican and Democrat, or at least reported in the article by Kurt Moffat in the Waterbury Republican, you'll see why on the next program I'm going to go through my background. I'm going to tell you what I did in my life to get to the position that I'm in now. This week, I was asked to send a short resume to the Winston Independent Party because they were interested in seeing what my background was as they consider, perhaps, endorsing me in this election. Once they do endorse me, I'll let you know. If they don't, I'll let you know that too. My background will be given in response to the two chair people, Democratic Party Republican Party in our town, the town committee chairman. They're both women. Neither of them, I don't think, have ever owned a big company or been CEO of a big company or COO of a big company, especially a worldwide company. So anyway, listen to what they had to say and reported to the Waterbury Republican, and then you can hear my background and compare for yourself. They'll say anything now to get elected. They'll do anything. They're jumping in the water. They're going to have meet and greets. They're going to knock on doors. They're going to do everything, except the candidates don't have any experience financially. Never do. They think everything's fine and going well, as you'll hear when I read you the Waterbury Republican article. They think everything's fine and dandy. The town manager and the mayor in Tarrington don't think that way at all. What happens if we do, for one reason or another, get cut a few million dollars? For the ECS grant. 
in Winstead, or tens of millions for the ECS grant in Torrington. What's going to happen then? It won't be pretty. You won't be able to say, it's business as usual, and we're doing fine. ECS grants, other state or local revenue reductions, or expenditure increases made along the way could really put us in a jam, according to what Bob Geiger and Bruce Stratford wrote about our financial situation to the state of Connecticut. If they don't drop the ECS grant, we still have a lot of risk because we might not get in as much revenue as we're planning. We might overspend. That's a habit in our town that we have to overcome. And don't forget the possible revaluation, devaluations this year. Winstead, despite what the candidates say, as usual, is sitting on a financial tinderbox. Anything can happen at any time, financially, and things can go wrong before they get better, as they pointed out in the letter to the state. So now I'm going to talk a bit about that, not as much detail as I did in the last meeting, but just enough to bring you up to date I remember what was said in the letter to the state by the town manager. It was a three-page letter pointing out that Winstead has a sword of Damocles, a financial sword of Damocles hanging over its head that could fall at any time for one reason or another. Those are my comments. The letter mentions the ECS grant money reduction, but of course there are many, many other reasons why the same things can happen if we don't get enough revenue in or we overspend our budget from year to year. And as you know, we don't have a five-year plan for revenue and expenses. We don't have one, and one of my planks is to get one. Plank number four in my published platform. Now I'll get on with things mentioned in the letter. The letter said that the reserve balance does not provide a completely correct picture of the town's financial position because it excludes the following items. $9.3 million in pension liabilities. $3.4 million in bond obligations. $2.1 million in other post-employment benefits. $1.1 million in claims and judgments. $900,000 in retirement pension liabilities, $900,000 in compensated absence obligations, $300,000 in pollution remediation obligations, $200,000 in capital lease payments and early retirement incentives. If the town were to pay off all of these liabilities at the same time, the town would face a deficit of $4,451,000, the town manager said. The town manager added that the Winstead has had no bond rating since 2013, and they're trying hard to get their bond rating back. In addition, the town has a $61 million infrastructure deficit consisting of $32 million for road surfaces, $16 million to resolve road drainage problems. We all know we've got those. $7 million for sidewalk repairs. And $6 million to repair or replace six structurally deficient or functionally obsolete bridges. Also, each of the three schools needs a new roof 
at an estimated combined cost of $3 million to $4 million. The town manager added that state aid reductions would hinder public work department's road maintenance efforts. The current budget includes adding two highway employees and replacements of old equipment, but the town is holding off on those expenditures until it knows what the state is going to do. He also said that municipal spending grew in every town in Connecticut between 211 and 215, except Winston. He added also that OPM's Municipal Finance Advisory Commission recently stopped requiring quarterly reports from the town on its financial condition after doing so for the last four years. A reduction in state aid could set the town back and force it to come before the commission again. Now, that it could also be if we have some kind of a crash in the stock market or if our values go down as far as uh, other things are concerned, we don't get in the revenue we think we're going to get in or we spend more money, then we're in the same pickle as though the state dropped things on us. Now, as you know, when values go down in town, and this is going to be coming up pretty quick, a revaluation of the property values in our town, this happens every five years. When I retired, it used to happen every 10 years, but they dropped it to five years. And should they go down, well, then the taxes go up to compensate for the value decreases and the less taxes that might come in. So we, the town, are doing the same thing that the state wants to do. We're saying to our taxpayers, hey, values in town went down, so revenue's gone down, so we're going to raise your taxes. Well, that's exactly what's happening if they do the ECS grant, dump it on us, the town, or dump any other costs on us to the town and make us keep doing what we were doing before with their money, but now with our money. That's a plank in my platform, plank number 11, dealing with a five-year revaluation tax conundrum. And the tax conundrum is that if the values of all the properties in town should go down in any revaluation year, the town will raise our taxes, just like the state's trying to do. They're trying to give us less money, but still want us to meet the needs that they set when they gave us the money in the first place. That means we have to pay for it. That's what I call the tax conundrum, plank number 11, when dealing with our town. The assessors are out working now. You can see them all over town. We hire somebody to do that work in our town, as do most towns and cities. And they go around and they try to see if property values have increased or decreased over the last five years. And then the town has to make a decision. They have to see whether the assessors have come up with a balanced view. Maybe the town will go down in values in this kind of an economy. And maybe the lake and Winchester will go up in values because those houses are selling a little better than they have after the crash. We don't know how much yet until we see assessor's results. If property values go up, then the town will have more money to spend, more revenue coming in from the property taxes. If the values go down on average, then they will raise the mill rate to compensate for that. I'm sure Bob Geiger will make an attempt to cut the budget wherever he can. Of course, he doesn't control 65% of the budget and the school money. So it will be difficult, but I'm sure he'll give it the best try he can. Property owners get a chance, after the results are known, to appeal their property values with the town and the assessors. When I lived in California, our family lived in San Diego, California, they could only go up 1% a year maximum on the taxes. But when you sold your house, They would revalue the house for the new purchaser, and the taxes could then go up higher. And once they went up higher, then the new owner would only be taxed a maximum of 1%, if anything, each year until the new owner sold the house and it was revalued again. That's just an example of how to resolve the tax conundrum that we get with valuation. There are probably other ways to do it too, but that's California example is one way they do it. Of course, they're probably a faster growing state than Connecticut is. 
Connecticut is now on the decline when it comes to getting revenue in. People and businesses leave the state. There are two articles that I'd like to read to you tonight and comment upon. The first article is an article written in the Waterbury Republican by Kurt Moffat, their reporter that covers the Winston area. He call me one day and ask me if we could get together for an interview. So I invited him up to my cottage at the lake. We sat in one of the boathouses and probably lasted about two hours. So I'll read to you that article now and then I'll make some comments on it. And then I'll follow with another article that was recently in the paper announcing that I would be endorsed by the Winstead Independent Party and that they have two other candidates that they are putting forward. One is Jerry Martinez, and the other is John Cooney. I don't know Mr. Cooney, but I do know he has a good background, like Jerry Martinez does, and is mathematical. Jerry Martinez works in the computer industry. He's very mathematical, very conservative, was a Trump backer, to the best of my knowledge. And Mr. Cooney, I'm told, is information technology, which again is very numerate business. So I need to get to meet him and talk to him to see if it's possible for me to personally vote for him in the November election. I will be voting for Jerry Martinez. So now I'm up to probably three people that I'll definitely vote for. I have two more that I'm considering one Democrat, and Mr. Cooney. But I will be voting for Todd Arshalashi. I will be voting for Jerry Martinez. And I'll be voting, most likely, I still have to think about it a little bit more, for Candace Bouchard, who's a Republican. And then I have a Democrat in mind that I think I might be able to work with to help the town manager and the finance director grow the grand list, and do a lot of the things that I've listed in my universal platform for all parties to rent on in November. And my deportment promises that I made as well. So anyway, here we go with the first article written by Kurt Moffat. The second article is also written by Kurt Moffat. There are no comments on the second article, although there were some comments on the first article. You'll hear them when I read the article. Following the two articles and my comments on the two articles, on the next program, I will be talking about my background and the commissions and committees that I worked on over the years since retiring. I've been retired here since 2002. I worked on several committees and commissions, spent a lot of time. I also wrote a lot of red and green papers, went to a lot of selectman meetings and other meetings. Board of Education meetings, trying to plead for better financial management in the town of Winchester, city of Winstead. So here we go with the first article. The article by Kurt Moffat was entitled, Third Party Candidate Running in Winstead. Subtitled, He's Running to Ride Trump's Coattails. Winstead. Retired computer executive Brian M. O'Haran could win a seat on the Board of Selectmen this November, but never actually serve on it. That's because he feels he can only work with certain people. O'Haran, a petitioning candidate for Selectmen, is not publicly naming those candidates, but in general, he says the candidates, both Democrats and Republicans, lack the financial experience necessary to run the town. Nobody on the finance board knows how to read a spreadsheet, he said, adding that he's sending a message to the board about what it needs to do if it's going to survive long term. Selectmen serve as the finance board in town. They receive monthly reports from the finance director. Mayor A. Candy Perez, a Democrat, 
who is seeking re-election for the seventh time, said the town is in strong in a strong financial position with about six million in reserves. We gave the first no tax increase on purpose, and there are results. Investors have told us the tenor of the board of selectmen, along with the town manager and staff, helped attract them to Winstead. She said, we have two old mills that are now becoming small businesses, along with an old mill ready, repurposed, and another becoming the American Mural Project. Restaurants have come in. There are no large taxpayers moving to any town in Northwest Connecticut, and consultants have confirmed it. Four of the five Republicans running for selectmen have never served elected office before, but Republican Town Committee Chairman Lisa R. Smith said those candidates include a real estate agent, a former corporate administrator for DHL, a loan officer, and an aerospace engineer who all have financial experience. The headline for this part of the article is, O'Heron won't serve with just anybody. Brian O'Heron is retired, out of touch with reality, Smith said. He doesn't have a good grasp of what's happening in the town financially in real time. He has a big world view of small town financial issues. It's an apple to oranges comparative. Selectman Todd Arshalashi, who's running for re-election as a petitioning candidate, could not be reached for comment. O'Heron, who at 80 has never served elected office, said he is running primarily to give town manager Robert Geiger some help. Bob's so wonderful. You're never going to get a better guy than Bob, he said, echoing the same sentiment for finance director Bruce Stratford. One of the town's top priorities has to be to grow the grand list, he said, which is another way of saying generate more tax revenue. The grand list is the amount of taxable property in town. This has been a goal of many past administrations and candidacies, O'Heron said. He liked to think big and cites the development of 688 acres or so, or even just part of that land, near Highland Lake as an example of the kind of tax revenue generator the town needs. About 10 years ago, the town had approved plans that called for 225 condominiums, a 455-unit active adult subdivision, and an 18-hole golf course. The project never got started, though, because the developer, Tony Solano, ran into financial trouble when the economy tanked, he filed for bankruptcy. The lenders then foreclosed on the property. Critics of that project said Solano was only in it for himself. O'Heron said, so what? If he can sell a piece of land and it pays a lot of taxes, what's wrong with that? O'Heron, who grew up in Torrington and moved to a house on Highland Lake, in 2003, says the town has too many small businesses sharing the same small pool of customers. He says he is a fiscal conservative with a liberal desire to help everybody. He says he has never belonged to a political party, but has created one for his campaign, the Trump Winstead Party. He said he is running as an unaffiliated candidate but with that backing of the Trump Winstead party. O'Heron said, President Donald Trump locally received 1.6 votes for every one vote for Hillary Clinton. Those Trump supporters are the voters he is targeting for his campaign. I'm going to ride Trump's coattails, he said. And that's the end of the article. Now I'll make a few comments about the article, especially answers to the two party leaders that commented. I'll tell you what I think of those comments. I sent Kurt Moffat an email after I read the article 
telling him that I thought he did a good job covering my views and that it was also helpful that the two party town committee chairmen made what I consider to be small time business as usual type comments to try to get elected in November. We killed two birds with one stone there, the good points about my candidacy and the bad points about theirs. I'm now going to talk about the comments made by the Democrat town committee chairperson. Kind of ironic that you should make these comments. You heard at the beginning of the program tonight and on the last program last week, all of the town managers and finance directors' concerns about the state of the finances in our town should we lose a few million dollars from the state. And then I've added in this program, well, what if we lose a few million dollars in the revaluation? What if we lose a few million dollars in the revenue? What if we gain a few million dollars in the expenses? Now, Bob will try to watch that closely, but that's the case. So, And although it's looking a little better for us, the ECS grant problem still isn't really resolved. Then you have the chairperson of the Democratic Party who is seeking re-election for the seventh time. Yikes! Seven times two? That's 14 years. That's through the whole of our debacle with the stolen and misplaced money and the supplemental taxes and all the other problems we've had with revaluation, etc., etc., etc. Losing all those opportunities to get profitable, advantageous revenue in town to help pay for the necessary expenses that Bob brought up in his letter to the state. In her comments, she said that the town is in a strong financial position with about $6 million in reserves. Well, you just heard me in the beginning of the program and in the last program talk about Bob's letter to the state, and he told you how weak a position we were in. She's saying we're in a strong financial position. That's the problem you have with the mayor. She's trying to run for office once again. Bob's trying to do his job, and so is Bruce. She also said we gave the first no tax increase on purpose. Well, they usually give no tax increase in election years, especially the Democrats. They always wait till the off year when they're not running for office to give the tax increase. We may or may not need one in the off year, but we certainly could get a mill rate increase if the property values go down on an average in this revaluation year. We might also get a supplemental tax that we can't vote on or one that we can vote on if the state cuts too much money from our budget, we don't get the revenue we're expecting, or the expenses go up. So she's really dreaming here and playing politics, as she has done over the last 12 years, and will continue to do so if she is reelected again, which she most likely will be, because this is a name recognition town. She's a teacher. She lives at the lake. She's got the support of the lake and the town. School system. And she shouldn't really have. And remember, a good percentage of the lake residents, summer residents, and town summer residents, and Winchester summer residents can't vote in this election. They can only vote on a budget issue or a money issue. So the town people will take it on the chin. Once again, her next comment, she says, there are results of having no tax increase on purpose. Investors have told us the tenor of the Board of Selectmen, along with the town manager, Robert Geiger, and staff, helped to track them to Winston. We have, we have two old mills that are now becoming small businesses, along with an old mill already repurposed and another becoming the American mural project, which pays no taxes, of course, and gets a lot of money from the state. That increases our state taxes. 
Same as the Nader Tort Museum, that doesn't pay any taxes either. They say, well, we're going to get a lot of feet on the street to go into the local shops and stores and do business in Winston. But when you ask them how much of a tax increase will there be, be for each foot additional on the street, nobody can tell you. So I'm not exactly in favor of that. It can't hurt the town in, in other ways, but financially it will be a burden. There won't be that many feet on the street coming to see the mural project. Sooner or later I'll tell you about my art background as well as my mathematical background, and maybe you'll understand a bit more about mural projects and art towns. She added that restaurants have come in. That's true, and in some respects good. But we need more restaurants, like we need a hole in the head. People aren't going to restaurants as much anymore. They do pick up a lot of donuts and things, coffees from McDonald's, donuts from Dunkin' Donuts. We have two Dunkin' Donuts in town. People stream through there. I guess they do probably 95% business through the window, out the window, and they're going to be turning now into robotics and uh, kiosks and things like that. So, yes, we have a few restaurants that do morning, noon, a few that even do evening meals. But most people don't open for business in the evening because people don't go out to dinner as much anymore because they can't afford it. They don't have the jobs, etc., etc. And if there's a restaurant where they don't take credit cards, their business drops in relation to the lack of credit card spending, which is quite a bit. The pizza shops do well because people can call in from Hartford, Waterbury, Bristol, wherever, order a pizza when they leave, pick it up on their way home, and be ready to eat when they get there. She added, based upon poor advice, most likely, that there are no large taxpayers moving to any town in northwest Connecticut, and consultants have confirmed it. Well, I don't know which consultant she's talking to, but... You, can, you sure can get business into our town. Depends on what kind of business you want to get. you got to get with the times and get, it, get the kind of businesses that are with the times. You can't opt out to be in our town or to be a pass-through town on the way up to the Berkshires or anything like that. You have to find out what businesses will come to our town and what advantages do they have. Maybe you need new consultants. But I can tell you, you can get businesses into our town if you try hard, and that will certainly help you. Also, you can get rest homes, you can get elderly homes, you can get all kinds of things like that that pay very advantageous tax and help with the cost of the running the town. Well, that's all we got from the chairperson of the Democratic Party comments on my article. I don't have much faith in her and never have had. I think she's an albatross around our neck. But if you vote her in, you deserve what you get. We'll now switch to the comments made by the chairman of the Republican Party to the reporter that wrote the article about my candidacy for the finance board running on a Trump Winston ticket that I set up in Hartford. These comments are of a different tenor because they are in the minority now on the Board of Selectmen and Finance Board. They're very liberal now, the Republicans, just like the Democrats are. Most of the ones that are, are probably not Trump supporters. Maybe they changed their mind since I saw them last year. But these comments are very interesting. And I'll give you my thoughts. The Republican Town Committee chairperson said, or was reported as, as having said, that four of the five Republicans running for selectmen and finance board have never served elected office before. But she said that those candidates include a real estate agent, a former corporate administrator for DHL, delivery service, a loan officer, and an aerospace engineer 
who all have financial experience. Well, that's all well and good, but what we need are some high-level executives, people who have master's degrees in business, people who have been CEOs, chief executive officers or COOs, chief operating officers, or who have run successfully large businesses during their career. Now, we're not likely to get any of those, so I'm not, I'm not demeaning these people, but I'm not going to vote for them either. I'm going to try to find people that are closer to what I think we need when I vote. She said that Brian O'Haran is retired and out of touch with reality. He doesn't have a good grasp of what's happening in the town financially in real time. He has a big world view of small town financial issues. It's an apples to oranges comparative. Well, that's really reaching kind of low because I've been in, on a lot of commissions and committees in our town over the years. I've been on committees. I've been in many, many, many meetings where developments were trying to come into town and business were trying to come into town. I've written red papers, yellow papers now since 2002, green papers now since 2002. I've been on TV since the early 2000s trying to help make Winston great again. I know more about the town and the finances than the leader of the Democratic Party town committee does. And certainly, a lot more than her candidate. I've had 80 years of experience at all levels, which I will talk about in the near future, before the election, in the art industry, and in the computer industry. So anyway, I forgive her for her comments. You should do the same. But I wouldn't vote for any of her people. There is one person there that I might vote for, and I'll name that, personally name, who I'm personally going to vote for on a future program. I think only one of these Republican candidates has a chance to win. I may be wrong, not always right, but I think it's going to be mainly Democrats and a few of the petitioning candidates in this year's November election. The second article was in the September 7th, 2017 Waterbury Republican American and written by Kurt Moffat although he's not given credit in the paper for the article. It's in the Daily Digest section under the title Winston. The title of the article is Two More Candidates in Running for Seat on the Board of Selectmen. There are two more candidates running for an already crowded contest for the Board of Selectmen this fall. The Winston Independent Party has endorsed Jerry Martinez, John Cooney, and Brian O'Haran. O'Haran had previously announced his candidacy as a petitioning candidate who will also appear on the ballot on the trump Winstead party ticket. Martinez ran for selectman in 2015 as a Republican and was cross-endorsed by the Winstead Independent Party. He is a former chairman of the Republican Town Committee and a current member of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Cooney has never before run for a local elected office in town. The two major parties, Democrats and Republicans, have each endorsed a slate of five candidates. There is one other petitioning candidate, Selectman Todd Archelashi, as the end of the article. I personally am very grateful to the Winston Independent Party for endorsing me for the election in November. Well, also, of course, as the article says, be on the trump Winston ticket. So you can vote for me either way. trump Winston ticket or Winston Independent Party. And I'd also like to thank the Winston Independent Party for putting forth two candidates that are financially numerate and I think can really help the town in its, its financial effort to balance the budget, grow the grand list, manage the expenses, and carry out some of the other financial issues mentioned in my universal platform and behave in a manner mentioned in my deportment promises if elected. And I choose to serve.
because enough other people have been elected to help the town manager and the finance director and myself make Winston great again financially. As I told Kurt Moffat when he called me to see what my reaction was to the endorsement, Winston Independent Party, I'm happy to receive this because I believe that they have a lot of conservative followers that want to see Winston made great again. They want to see the grand list grow. They want to see the taxes under control. A lot of members of the Taxpayer Association follow their lead. I'm in favor of the Taxpayer Association because it's a check and balance on the town. It keeps a strong check and balance on the spending of the town. I, over the years, have concentrated on trying to grow the grand list. That was my main emphasis because the Winston Taxpayer Association was doing a good job, in my opinion, especially when many of the older members were still here to help us. As you know, in my section, Deportment Promises, I have promised that if elected and I serve, choose to serve, I will delegate the annual stipend that the town gives to the selectmen. Each year, it's about $1,000 or so. To the Taxpayers Association, each year that I choose to serve. On the Board of Finance, which is part of the Board of Selectmen. Well, I wanted to talk a bit about my own personal artistic and business background this on this program but we're running out of time and it's going to take me quite a while so I'll do that next week and next week I'll probably repeat my platform and my deportment promises if I'm elected. I've also received some feedback on my platform the universal platform that I think everybody should be running on in this election. One person gave me five from my own. He picked five out of the 11 for the platform. And another person picked three of the 11 for the platform. There, there is a feeling that the platform should be smaller and that we should have less activities on it because it's hard for people to grasp it and understand it all at their level of experience. And I think they have a point there. But my level of experience shows that you need to give a well-rounded platform that will help us make Winston great again and a well-rounded list of deportment promises that I will follow if elected and I choose to serve. So I think that's kind of important. So I thank all of you for being here and listening tonight, paying attention. I hope you pay attention right up until November voting day so that we all get a chance to get a good finance board in our town to help meet the needs of the future. It's very important for us. So pay attention. Try to understand how people think. Try to vote for the people that you think will help make Winston great again. And stick it out until we are great again. Thanks to everybody who has been encouraging me along the way, giving me feedback from week to week, month to month, year to year, trying to help me keep my own spirits up while I'm running for this office. I thank everybody for that. They deserve it. it means they're paying attention. They're paying attention. They're paying close attention. While finishing this program, I received a letter from the Office of the Registrars of Voters, Town of Winchester, 338 Main Street, Winstead, Connecticut, 06098, informing me to please be advised of my right to be present for the lottery to determine the order of names of candidates for the November 7th, 2017 municipal election as they will appear on the ballot. The lottery will take place on Thursday, September 14th, 2017, at 4 p.m. 
in the B. Francis Hicks room. The lottery is open to all candidates and the public will begin promptly at 4 p.m. Thank you, Deborah Jones, Republican Registrar, and Barbara Braunstein, Democratic Registrar. So I went down to the town hall and I asked them if I had to be present for this. And they said, no, I didn't have to be present. The lottery would take place. Beginning at 4 p.m., even if nobody shows up. They also explained to me that for the main parties, the Democrats will be first because they're in power down in Hartford. The Republicans will be second. And then Trump Winston party, of which I am the only candidate. And lastly, the Winston Independent Party, which has three candidates, and I will be in the first row because they are backing me. And I guess the last will be the petitioning candidate, Todd Arshalaschi, and let's hope he does well. If I have misrepresented anything here or got anything wrong in my interpretation from the information I found out from the town hall, I will correct it next week. I'm sure people will bring it to my attention and I'll correct it next week. It's hard learning this stuff when you're doing it for the first time at 80 years old. Of course, everything I do once I'm elected, I'm used to finance board stuff and all that communicating with others. I'm used to that. This will take me a while to get used to as well, dealing with the state and the town on political issues. Here are my jokes again that people keep sending me. I'm only going to show two of them now. One is Vice President Pence saying that I'm the right candidate to make Winston great again. Again, the apostrophe is missing. I hope the next time whoever sends these will put the apostrophe in for me. And Donald Trump who says, vote for my friend, Brian O'Haran. Vote for my friend, the President of the United States, in a joke, says, vote for my friend, Brian O'Haran. And I hope that all you people who voted for Mike Pence and Donald Trump will vote for me in the local election and other people that can help me to make Winston great again. I'll probably only be giving interviews to one newspaper before the election. Good night to all. Brian O'Haran. Episode 
election on November 7th, 2017. By sending a clear message to our town leaders. Good night, Brian O'Haren.